Hi all, Massbound Cup from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today it is Wednesday, the 1st of April. This concludes 21 days in isolation. <laughs> and together with my kids here, Alfred and April, we are examining some wires. And that is exactly what today's video is about. Wires. A video I never thought I would do about wires and copper because this is just one of those basic things that everybody knows about. But let's take a look at what I have salvaged from different machines, bought up cheap, found on scrapyards. Yeah, just I don't even know where to start from this. So let's just start over in the huge box here. Now this is all wire from teardowns which have a some sort of cable shoe or connector on it that I saved simply because yeah who, who wants to uh, press fit a spade shoes um, if you can just pick up a wire for some experiment but that have uh, kind of evolved into all kinds of large gauge wires smaller gauges um, a lot of these battery DC clips very high current um, connectors. Saved a lot of those uh, from UPS systems. Always have someone, some of those in that box as well. Very nice and can be reused uh, for any DC application with a high current load. Some other nice uh, connectors here. Some kind of five pole. So you have earth and I think it's uh, meant for DC, so a positive and negative, with sec securing fastener, very nice stuff, but other than that, much of this is, okay, that seems to be some kind of silicone cable, but other than that, just a huge lot of different wires from inverters. So what you see here is actually what you see in many inverters, that you do not do much to keep your uh, inductance down between uh, the inverter and the load, because it's all just made in normal machine tool wire. You can even see something like this long wire. It's marked C2E1, so that comes from the ITPT brick goes up to the load and look at that inductance it was even coiled up I mean so we might as well yeah just scrounge through this box mm. seems to just be some weird connectors mostly uh, gate drive connectors for uh, IGPT modules yeah a lot of those in here some PCB connectors but uh, normally when you do a really low inductance bus bar design, you uh, would have your negative and positive rails put as close together as possible to cancel each other out. That would give a low inductance design. Um, having them side by side where you have them connect directly to the IDPT terminals actually has a higher self inductance than having them mounted over each other with a insulating layer between them. So uh, aluminum, a really good conductor uh, to the price and especially to the weight as well, uh, can conduct about 70% uh, of uh, copper, but cost way less. So a really good alternative to uh, copper. Some uh, flexible uh, copper um, bus bar comes from the main distribution panels. says something interesting here just says 105 degrees Celsius rated some uh, nice large um, brass always good for uh, bus bar design as well another um, pre-machined aluminum bar I have some more of these um, in a another box with all my bus bar in um, came from an inverter and you have the bulk capacitance connected to these this is a little funny bus bar that I uh, have from a uh, very um, small inverter. It's actually heat-sinked bus bar. 
So they made some fins on the bus bar to, yeah, lead heat away from that. Quite uh, unusual. And now these flexible babies. I think I recall these are rated for three or four thousand amps. Something in that region. Huge, nice, flexible uh, pieces of uh, copper bus bar. I think I saved these um, or bought these for copper scrap, scrap price to use them in a large capacitor bank if I was ever to build one of those. Since in the at the point where you have the you can say we connect this to the capacitor and this to the spark gap, then just the current moving through a wire at the at that magnitude will actually make them flex and this would make it able to absorb some of those forces that would normally destroy your bus bar work in such large, large capacitor banks. So I found four of those. Other than that, this is mostly a salvaged um, copper bar, copper bus bar. And many of these are actually bus bars from a 10 kVA inverters. Doesn't have to be any thicker than that. When you have a lot of forced uh, air cooling inside such a unit. This is normally what you would see there. Something like this uh, thicker actually comes from uh, DC, um, low, low voltage DC, high current inverters. Another good thing you can salvage is actually something like this. This is a normal um, flexible ground strap that you can find in many electrical cabinets. But if you have uh, grounded cables, or wire, shielded cables it's called, you have almost exactly the same thing as the shield. It's also a braided tinned copper, um, copper shield. So you can actually just get these out of shielded cable if you want to get that very cheap. Mm, any other interesting parts here? Just mostly uh, flat bands and braided copper. But all very nice because you can get the braided copper going everywhere since it's so flexible. Something like network cable. Why would I show you network cable? Here you can see I actually uh, stripped it open to get the wires out. Here I have a bag of uh, the internal wiring from a network cable. And that's because I use this for making gate drive transformers and current transformers. So this is just measured up in length to make 33 turns on a uh, core. Oh, maybe this is not that bad because I think I had that marked up. This is just some excess uh, wire. But it's a good idea to use this because it's already twisted. And if you take all the four pairs inside such a network cable, then you have uh, four colored pairs. You can use, use those for each their gate in a full bridge. And you can take all the, um, the four white wires and parallel those and use that as the primary coil. So you have one primary coil with four wires in parallel and you have four secondaries with each their color. It's absolutely perfect for a gate drive transformer as you have a very tight coupling between your turns and your um, different uh, windings. Another good thing to salvage is uh, multi-cord uh, control cables. Here I have just stripped off the outer um, insulation. And uh, I wanted to keep this because this was a multi-colored cable and I just used this for any project where I need to yeah, just put in some wires and why not make them different colors so it makes it easier to fault find and some other small uh, wire pieces here. Now this is all high temperature or high voltage wire from uh, ovens, microwave ovens. We can see here from the microwave ovens you can very often find this uh, red wire or red with some uh, black stripes. This is more like a uh, cloth cloth wire. But this uh, normal red wire here is actually rated for 20 kV DC. Whereas if you find something like uh, the neon sign wire I have here, 
which is meant for outside installation. Installation that's why it's uh, double insulated. Has a um, silicone core with a ultraviolet light resistant outer insulation, rated for five to ten thousand volt AC. The funny thing about this neon sign tube uh, wire is actually that if you take the wires up against each other, you will have corona forming. So I'm not quite sure if that voltage rating is um, is all that good. These are from uh, old CRT uh, TVs, and these are actually uh, respect distance uh, spaces, which are exactly to avoid the corona um, issue with wires touching other stuff, as it would then just have enough of these wheels put on to not lean against anything. The last thing I have inside here, also the whole black, the black coils in here, is a silver red uh, copper wire from um, yeah, old uh, tube transmitters and uh, other radio stuff that is from a age long, long ago. Very uh, nice for um, high frequency designs. Among other things, lots of flat band that's not really used that much anymore, so you can find a lot of this thrown out. Here I have a whole box of 10-way uh, sockets. So that's a good, uh, good supply of headers for all kinds of different uh, stuff. Over in the section of uh, new wire, I'm say th this is something I bought up in a lot, uh, pretty cheap, so I just took it. Some uh, large flat copper foil, 150 millimeter across, 0.05 millimeter thickness. Not quite sure what I'm going to use that for yet, but that was just too nice to let go. Came along with some 0.2 millimeter, 0.28 millimeter. And this is just some of the spools I have. I have so much magnet wire lying around. Like this, uh, this used to be a 10 kilogram spool of 0.75 millimeter wire. This is what I used for my large dual resonant solid state Tesla coil. So I still have, I think I used six kilograms or something like that for the coil. Maybe seven. There's not more than two, two, three kilograms left there. So it takes a lot of wire to make a, uh, a big coil like that. Another thing that you can find on scrapyards is uh, whole spools of high uh, quality wire. This is some um, 16 square millimeter, 17 kilogram was the spool. But the good thing about that is you can just buy it for scrap price. So that's one euro a kilogram. So paying 17 to 20 euros for a spool of 100 meter, 16 square millimeter wire that's just insanely cheap. And it's always useful for, uh, for a Tesla coil to have such large gate wi earth wiring. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, video I thought I would never make. Just a quick rundown of what I have saved from all different kinds of teardowns and stuff I would like to use in a future project. So until next time. See ya.